Say it quietly. Come closer. We might just have ourselves a title race. Yep. Wolves may have just created a title race. Either that or I'm clutching at straws. Either way, we're going to find out and put forward the five things that Wolves use to beat Man City and their 100% Premier League record. That's Premier League record. And also the five things that you at home could tell your Premier League team to do the next time they play Man City to give them a chance of beating them and thus igniting a title race. First of all, the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper needs to have one hell of a game and Jose Sarr did exactly that. Jose Sarr's application between the sticks was always going to be crucial in a match like this and it was. You know, seven saves during the match. But there's actually a much more important stat that we need to highlight because this was one of the clearest methods that Wolves used to get the better over Man City. And the big thing that they did was... Jose Sarr didn't dribble with the ball. He played long passes. Long passes to Cunha, to Aitnori, and he cham more on that in a second when it comes to that um, asymmetric version of Wolves and Neto as well. Of course, Neto scored a fantastic goal, not from a long ball, but Jose Sarr attempted 22 long balls during the game. Now, to put that into context, Wolves as a team attempted 54. So that means that Jose Sarr was accountable for 41% of Wolves' long balls. Now, a lot of people will say that this is down to him aimlessly booting it long, but that is not the case. Because if it was the case, then other players within the team would be doing it as well. But he had 41% of those long passes. So here we've got Jose Sarr preparing to kick the ball long. But what happens next is the interesting thing. And it was actually a theme throughout the game for Wolves in their victory against Man City. So if you move it along one more... So this is what happened after this long ball, but actually it happened four or five times during the match. So from these long ball situations, Wolves would allow the back five that they had set up. And if we go back to the tactics board, I reckon I can probably show you that. You've got the back five there of Gomez, Aitnori, Dawson, Kilman, Semedo as well. But it became a little bit asymmetric. Let me show you exactly how. Because what happened was Aitnori would push a little bit higher up. Uh, he would be, it would be an asymmetric back five. So you'd have Semedo staying back and Aitnori in this case would be latching on to Carl Walker. This then allowed Huang Hee Chan, who is here, to move centrally, starting off as a wide player himself to a point and latch onto a Kanji. Mateus Cunha, who is here, he would then wait for any scraps or knockdowns that came his way. This also happened on the right-hand side with Samedo pushing forward onto someone like Akanji. And Neto would then move in a little bit more centrally as well. And it was really, really effective in breaking up the game and forcing Man City defenders into uncomfortable situations. Because Wolves gave themselves a really good chance to make the game as scrappy as possible. To put the Man City defenders into uncomfortable situations by going vertically quite quickly to allow them to be a little bit exposed. And they couldn't then bring the ball down and play out from the back like they would normally want to. And ultimately, they made it really, really scrappy, as scrappy as possible. And it limited the momentum that Man City could get to the best of their capabilities, which is the best you can do, if we're honest. Second up, you've got to have a low block. But that low block has to be a very, very concentrated one. Now, most teams that beat Man City will do so by using a low block. But it can't just be a simple low block. It has to be thought through and purposeful in its execution. And Wolves did exactly that. It was very purposeful. Now, we're going to show you why this average position map is important in how Wolves beat Man City. And again, how any team could beat Man City. Because firstly, as previously discussed, it's a low block. And actually, if you look at the heat maps in particular, it's amazing. You know, look at someone like Lamina, who was, you know, dealing with the midfield attacking players of Man City. It's literally going to be spitting distance from the 18-yard box. But they were also backed up by that midfield. And in particular, someone like Mario Lamina, as I said, just highlighted him here, dealing with zone 14. And he gave the back three protection in that area. And back three is an important element in this as well, I think. We'll get to that. So this meant that it was hard for Man City to fragment any of the back three or to force them to step out of position. Secondly, look at Zhao Gomez here. Zhao Gomez had a really important game and role defensively out of 
possession because him and Nelson Semedo's positioning on the right were really important when it came to doubling up on any kind of space that someone like Doku could have. And that's the interesting different side of Doku. Now, Doku had a really good game, still had a great game. But the idea of sort of limiting that space, when as much as it's difficult to know which way he's going to go, you do know that he does want to dribble with the ball. So it's not a waste of a midfielder having them over on that side and letting them stay there because he is going to have the ball with him. And from that point of view, it's then going to come down to someone like Doku to be really quite refined in his movements, be it, is he able to beat two players or is he able to suck in those two players and play the ball to someone else? In this game, maybe he wasn't, you know. It's a really valid tactic in the sense of how pacey Doku is and how direct he is when he gets up to full speed. So you want to stop that from happening. And also kind of divide and conquer when it comes to your two defenders. One can deal with the fact they might go on the outside. One can deal with the fact they might go inside. All in all, it was a very structured way of defending. And given how the result panned out, it's probably something that other teams will try to copy. It's all down to the shape of you, I think, when you're defending your own third and which areas of the pitch to take priority. It does. It's not just about sitting back and hoping for the best and curling up into a ball. You're going to kind of be proactive at the battles that you choose to undertake. And that might be something to keep an eye on when it comes to Doku. On that left-hand side for Man City, you know what he's going to do. It's very difficult to stop him, but there might be a desire to focus the team down that left-hand side to give Doku the ball to at least know what you're going to do when he has it. I know they will recycle time and again, but that might be something that teams look to focus on as one of the most, at least it's better the devil you know than anything else. Let's talk about the back three that Wolves played because when looking at Wolves' setup, it's of course a back three. Man City have faced two other teams who have played with a back three in the Premier League this season. First of all, Nottingham Forest, and second of all, Sheffield United. But we need to disregard the Forest game, I think, because it will it was at the Etihad, and Man City are always great at home. Now the games against Sheffield United and Wolves, that's what's interesting because they're two teams that they should be pumping here. But they both played with the back three and Man City were away from home in both games and both games were a bit of a struggle. The back three that Sheffield United played, it allowed them to do a similar thing to Wolves in terms of creating these types of triangles here. These types of triangles are actually really, really important because especially and especially in those wide spaces against Man City. Now, the reason for this is that it's it makes it hard for the ball to travel from the midfield third to those wide areas. And it forces Man City to move the ball backwards, to recycle. If the ball's in front of you, you haven't conceded a goal yet. That is a rule that I think all teams should live by when they're playing against Man City. And so they've still got the ball. You know, they still have possession. They still tick the boxes when it comes to the momentum bar, which is a joke, to be honest. But the reality is that they aren't as effective when sides do this against them. They still create chances. Yes, of course they do. But they don't have that vice-like grip of the game and they have to work for it a lot more. Man City's XG against Wolves speaks volumes to this point because what this ultimately does is it gives Man City's opposition a rough idea that they are beatable and that there is a way around them if things go their way. And again, when it comes to Man City, I think the difficulty for a lot of teams is that, you know, you feel like you're beaten before you even get going, right? And I think this kind of result, it's going to probably have some teams and managers thinking, tonight's the night, it's going to be all right, we've got a chance against these guys. And no one gave Wolves a prayer of beating them. But what they had was the next key thing when you want to beat Man City, which is ball carrying. Now, this brings us on to Mateus Cunha, a player that definitely plays. He plays for the badge. He works so hard. Gary Neal's had, had a word with him. He's looked him in the eye. He clearly likes him. And Cunha is reciprocating that. He's got that at everything I do, I do it for you kind of energy. You can feel it. But a lot gets said about Mateus Cunha's finishing ability. But you can't doubt how good his ball carrying is in central areas and how useful he is against sides who play a high line. He made three out of five successful dribbles against Man City and operated centrally whilst also drifting out to the wider positions to help facilitate Huang and Eight Nuri. He also carried the ball for a total of 89 progressive yards, which is very good in a central position. This is where all the aspects that we've touched on come together. It's about being direct. I think it's about being vertical against Man City. It's about using the space because you're not going to have the possession. And all that put together, I think it creates a bit of a mini blueprint on how to get around or through Man City. So you've got Dawson here. Dawson gets on the ball. 
Let's get rid of all that. Dawson gets on the ball and he makes a quite quick pass through the lines, through that first line here, as you can see, to Ait Nori. Let's move it along one because Ait Nori is really important here. Now, Ait Nori has Carl Walker sort of latched on him. So there's a defensive line that you've broken through initially. Can you do it again? Can you do it again quickly? And can you break another line here that has been created from the fact that Carl Walker is tight on Ait Nori? Of course, you can see Mateus Cunha here is looking for those passes because he's the kind of player that you want on the ball to be able to drive with the ball. He is able to get the ball. And once he does get the ball, You've then got more movement all around him. That's a great thing that Wolves have. They have really great runners in and around him. So once he's got the ball and he's facing up Akanji, Akanji's got to deal with him. He doesn't have to deal with Huang. And actually, there's this whole big space being created over here. But I don't think the, that's really the thing that anyone's worried about because the real thing that Mateus Cunha wants to do is exactly what he's great at, exactly what he was great at against Man United right at the start of the season, Monday Night Football, is looking a defender in the, in the eyes being in those central areas and looking to drive and get away and create trouble. And Man City, look, they win their duels quite regularly and they have wonderful defenders who have physicality so can deal with a direct ball and are pretty good one-on-one -on -one as well. But again, this is your best chance when there is space all around you and an opportunity to run at the opposition and allow there to be space in behind as well. So being direct both with the ball on the floor but also being direct with the ball in the air are two ways of making it scrappy, but also making it awkward for this Man City side. And the creating of those gaps in transition, it, the main reason for it is to disfigure the opposition because you've got a defender here who doesn't really want to be there. You've got a defender here who's about to get dragged across as well. And if it was a normal back four, you'd much rather it was something like one, two, three, and then another player over here, right? Or, you know, further off screen. So... The disfiguring of that, whilst having all this space to work with, makes life very difficult when you're in transition on the counter-attack. It was a stunning victory for Wolves and, uh, you know, a lot of people were probably going to need to apologise to Gary O'Neill, myself included, because I don't think we were expecting them to be OK. And he may be, but this is clearly a thought-through idea. And those who question his tactics, as I said may have to eat their words if Wolves continue to put these direct moves together but actually have some end product there as well. Of course, you saw that with someone like Neto, who's looking better and better each week. And because that is the sign of a project, I think, when you're starting to see the output in these tough games. And you're going to play a lot of tough games, so you need to be able to get points from them. We spoke about that when it came to Nottingham Forest, but Wolves have a lot of the ammunition needed to hurt opposition that are higher up in the league and want to retain the ball all the time. Number five, and actually I'm going to chuck in a sixth one here, is no Rodri. This team does not look the same without Rodri in the side. And that's one thing that Arsenal get to look forward to this week and will be a massive talking point when we do talk about it when it comes to Arsenal against Man City. But moving aside from that, Generally, look, if you want to beat Man City, you need luck. Any team that does, they're going to be dependent on some luck, some sugar, you know, a little bit of magic even. And Wolves, they definitely said they went for it. It was magic. Abracadabra, they pulled it out the hat. Which is weird because generally you pull rabbits out of the hat, but on this occasion it was three points. So well done, Wolves. But at the very top level, you do create your own luck in a way. And Wolves did that. Because they scored two great goals, they worked very hard for their victory. And when I say luck, I mean luck, as I said, not fortune, not fluke. Because the game plan was there and they executed it. But if Jose Sar doesn't make any of those saves, it's of course a very different story. But that's what friends are for, right? And Jose Sar is probably everyone's best mate right now because he may have just created a title race. Say it louder. Please let there be a title race this year. Don't just run away with it, Man City. Make it fun for us.